The number of people dealing with digestive issues continues to skyrocket. Everything from people dealing with irritable bowel syndrome or inflammatory bowel disease, which really are just umbrella terms to say, you've got this collection of gut symptoms, but we can't find any pathology, like an ulcerative colitis or something like that, so we're just gonna label it, to maybe people who don't qualify for that, but they just get some bloating or gas after certain foods or some cramping or whatever it is. There is a whole range of gut symptoms that so many people are dealing with on a constant basis. And there is a lot of good information out there online about the foods to avoid and the foods to have. And yes, you wanna start there. We wanna make sure we're not eating foods that are gonna cause our gut to get worse. We've got to avoid lectins and too much sugar and chemicals like high fructose corn syrup and artificial sweeteners. And we have to go and deal with the underlying biotoxins. If you've got parasites or mold or Lyme disease, all of that's gonna create leaky gut and create all sorts of irritable bowel type problems. But I've done a lot of videos on that. There's a lot of information out there on that. But there's one thing that doesn't get enough attention that you need to address if you're dealing with gut issues. And this hidden thing is emotional stress. A lot of us don't think about emotional stress creating something like gut issues. We might think of it as bringing on headaches or pain in our temples from clenching our jaw and neck being tight from being like that all the time. But it can create a huge problem in the gut and everywhere else in the body because of this reason. When we are dealing with a lot of stress, either some really serious sort of one-off stress, you've just had someone die or you're going through divorce, you're maybe gonna lose your job or maybe it's a more chronic underlying stress that's just, you've been in a job you can't stand for years and years, what, whatever it is. When we have those hormones pumping through our body all the time, cortisol, adrenaline, basically keeping you in a low level fight flight response, it's very toxic to the body. And because we're designed to have those for small periods. If someone comes to attack you, you should either fight or flee and you don't want to think about that you want your subconscious brain to kick it in and everything takes off hey dr rodney here if you want to get my free pdf five hacks for boosting your immune system just go into the description of this video click on the link download it and if you have any questions on it just send me a message and i'll help you out with it but we don't want to be in it all the time because what happens when we're in a fight flight response well what does our brain want to happen we want blood to go to our vital organs and our powerful muscles right so we need our heart and our lungs pumping more. We want our pupils to dilate so we can see better. We want our powerful muscles to get more blood flow and we want the blood to pull away from the skin so that if we get cut, we're less likely to bleed to death. But what else do we not need in a life-threatening situation? We don't need our immune system functioning. We don't need our reproductive system functioning and we don't need our gut or our GI tract functioning. This is why when Animals or humans get very terrifying experience. People and animals are known to either pee or poop themselves because the brain is saying, dump everything that's there and then we're gonna shut it down. So you can imagine if you're having this low lying or low underlying chemical response all day, every day because you're living in stress, you're just constantly anxious. Your nervous system feels like you're under attack all the time. You're jumpy at everything. And maybe it's not even that obvious, but if that's always going on, it's impossible for your gut to work properly. It, it just can't because the brain that controls it isn't sending the right signals down there because it's too worried about keeping you safe because the information it's getting in through your nervous system is telling it there's always danger going on. And even though you might not feel like it's life-threatening danger, when you have that constant anxiety and the way you're seeing the world and perceiving things puts you in that state, then you are going to be stuck in some form of that fight-flight response. So if you don't fix that, your gut is forever going to create issues. It, it, there's just no other way around it. Now, the cleaner you eat and the cleaner your lifestyle is, the more that helps because it is gonna help the gut and it's gonna help calm down some inflammation which will hopefully unstick your nervous system a little bit. But if you don't address whatever the stress is that's going on or the unresolved past traumas that have led to this, then you're just never gonna get there. So what do I recommend in that situation? Well, start with what you can control. Do a lot of daily breathing exercises. Meditate, get out in nature, remove yourself from the people or the situations that are driving more of that stress. Get good quality sleep. Do all of those things. Then go and address any underlying biotoxins. Mold is very commonly known to drive a nervous system into that 
hypersensitive stuck state. You've got to address that. And again, we don't want to add more problems to the gut by eating a bunch of garbage food. But ultimately we have to get those stress levels down. There's some great online training programs like Primal Trust is a really good one that I've seen great results for people. Uh, I've seen people get really good results getting adjusted by a chiropractor because the research for chiropractic is showing that when you get adjusted, it, the message runs up and affects the prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that we can turn up or down our fight flight response. But that will only work short term if you're not dealing with the unresolved emotional traumas from the past or present. So you have to take care of all of that. And if you do, you will almost certainly see a change in your gut issues if there's not a pathology there. But if you're dealing with things like parasites or anything else, obviously you have to remove those as well. But don't forget this one hidden piece that most people miss being emotional stress. So if you've got questions about this, leave a comment below. And if you need to know more information about this kind of topic, I'm releasing some more videos about this here in the next few weeks. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and make sure you don't miss them when I release them.